Hey, how's it going everyone? Jake here and welcome to The Best Hobby. Today I'd like to share with you guys five lessons that I wish I knew about when I started Pokemon card collecting. These are fundamentals and things that I think about every single day when I am still collecting Pokemon cards. These really helped me out as I went on collecting throughout the years through making a lot of different mistakes. And I'm hoping that this will really serve you guys years down the line as you guys are becoming expert collectors yourself. So let's jump right into these lessons. The first thing that I wish I knew about when I started Pokemon card collecting was to really narrow down my scope. When you're a brand new Pokemon card collector, you tend to want to collect everything because you really have nothing to start with. So you really want to just start grabbing pieces, buying cards, buying products so you can accumulate a Pokemon card collection. And as my girlfriend really always says, it's not really about the size of your collection that matters. So what I mean is to really narrow down your scope, you can become an expert at one single card. And if you have just one Pokemon card inside of your collection, you are already a Pokemon card collector. Don't feel like you need to have thousands of Pokemon cards, lots of different Pokemon card products to be a really solid Pokemon card collector. So really narrow down your scope, become an expert in one particular card to really start with. Know who the artist is, know what year it was printed, know how many graded copies of that card there are, whether that is something modern like say Gentleman Pikachu, or it could be something vintage like Sky Ridge Eevee. If you have a card that you enjoy, then know every single thing about that card and this will really serve you well down the line. What this means is that you become an expert with that card. And when you're scrolling through eBay listings, when you're looking at prices and there is a good deal on that card, you can scoop it up right away without even a second thought because you already know what that card is worth at every single grade level, at every single dent and scratch on that card, and you know how rare and unique it is. So that is really important. Don't feel like you need to be a Pokemon card collector that has a large and vast collection. If you're new to the hobby, really hone down your scope and become an expert in that one special area. The second big thing that I wish I knew about when I started Pokemon card collecting is always, and I mean always, have sleeves and top loaders at the ready. What usually happens is people buy Pokemon card booster packs or Pokemon card uh, in general before they have any sleeves or top loaders ready. And what pretty much happens is now your rare Pokemon cards are out in the open. You have no protection for these cards. I think the most egregious example is back in 2020 when Collectible Guru opened up a first edition base set booster pack in front of a very large live audience. And the guy didn't have any sleeves ready. He was putting first edition base set Pokemon cards inside of just straight up top loaders. And if you've ever held a top loader, you know that those aren't really meant to hold cards without the sleeves. The sleeves are really there to protect the cards from the top loaders because the top loaders will actually scratch the cards. The top loader is really meant to prevent the card from bending. The sleeves will protect the cards from the scratches. So you need both sleeves and top loaders. They're very, very affordable and they will save you hundreds of dollars down the line in just damaging your cards, really giving you nice protection for your valuable Pokemon cards. Because I have so many cards in my collection that were at one point only worth two or three dollars and I really didn't top load those cards and now they're worth 50 to 100 dollars and I just wish I had top loaded them back in those days and I always have sleeves and top loaders at the ready now so I will have a link down in the description if you'd like to at least know what the current top loaders and card sleeve prices are and what these are products really look like so you can add them to your collection and always have sleeves and top loaders at the ready. The third big lesson that I wish I knew about when I started Pokemon card collecting is that you got to hustle. And what that means is this is a community and Pokemon card collecting is extremely welcoming. Don't feel like you have to be a silo. Things are very different nowadays. The Pokemon community is very welcoming. Join Facebook group, check out the subreddit, join Discord groups. There are so many different areas of the hobby that you really should be involved in. Make the connection, build those friendships, build those relationships so that you have other 
Pokemon card collectors that you can trade with, that you can enthuse about, and it really builds up your reputation in the community. You are able to collect so many more rare cards when you know the right people. And there are so many Pokemon card collectors out there that are more than willing to share their collection and trade cards with you, even if you are a brand new Pokemon card collector. Make some calls to your local game store. See what kind of groups they have in, around. Join some Instagram groups. There are so many different ways that you can be a part of the community. Don't feel like you're just off on an island by yourself. There is such a wide variety of number of different ways to be involved inside the hobby that there's just no reason to be by yourself. You will have such a more vast and entertaining time when you join in on the conversation that is at large. The fourth big lesson that I wish I knew about when I started Pokemon card collecting was to go Japanese. And this is something that I realized with a lot of new collectors is that they really focus in on their native language, whether that's German, French, English, or whatever else. And they don't realize that there is a vast ocean of Pokemon cards available once you're willing to go outside of your language, especially with Japanese cards, which are quite honestly some of the most breathtaking Pokemon cards in the hobby. The Japanese audience really has a lot of unique promo cards that the other languages just aren't privy to and honestly sealed Japanese products are still one of the most hidden secrets inside of the hobby. Most people don't realize but sealed Japanese products perform rather extraordinary when compared to other sealed products like say English. For example, we have XY Evolutions booster boxes in English and everyone knows how astounding those are. An XY Evolution booster box right now goes for right around $1,000. But in Japan, they have the CP6 booster box, which is the Japanese equivalent of XY Evolution. A CP6 booster box will currently be going for right around $2,000 to $3,000. And that is significantly higher than XY Evolution and a big reason for this is that the Japanese products tend to have much more conservative print runs. For example, another example, we have Shining Fates. Shining Fates, I am very confident I will still be able to purchase sealed products in the next two years. There will be more Shining Fates products printed, I can guarantee it. But the Japanese Shiny Star V product, I don't know how much more of those are going to be readily available. And I actually think by next year, you're gonna see the market for Shiny Star V, which is the Shining Fates equivalent, really dwindle down. So that's why I actually recommend people, if you're looking to buy some sealed products, try out the Japanese products because as an unspoken part of the hobby, they can perform significantly better and they are much more desirable and unique compared to some of the other English type products. The fifth big lesson that I wish I knew about when I start Pokemon card collecting is to always buy what you like. And this is really important to me because of course I have an audience myself and I am privy to my own opinion. There are plenty of cards that I say I really enjoy and I think they are rock star cards. And there are cards out there that I say I don't feel like there's potential in these cards and I don't enjoy them. And I am completely okay with that. If you disagree with my opinion, that is totally cool as well. Feel free to collect Pokemon cards that I disagree with. That's what's cool about this hobby is that you can collect what you enjoy. When I started Pokemon card collecting, I really feel like I needed to uh, do it optimally. So what I would do is I might purchase cars that I don't know if I really even desire inside of my collection just because I thought that these were highly desirable cards. For example, Charizard. I'm not a huge Charizard collector, not that I don't enjoy Charizard, but I'm not a huge Charizard collector. And honestly, I wish I had almost stayed away from certain Charizard cards because I would have been able to purchase a lot more uh, cards that I were actually interested in. And so this is really important because don't buy cards that you feel you are collecting just because they are optimal. Buy cards and collect cards that you really enjoy. If you really enjoy them in your collection, then that's honestly what is the most important thing. That is what this hobby is all about, is to have fun and really enjoy yourself. 
All right, everybody, those are the five lessons that I really wish I knew about when I started Pokemon card collecting. It would have saved me so much trouble if I just knew these things ahead of time. So I hope they definitely help you guys out. And if you're a veteran Pokemon card collector, or even if you're someone new and you have something that you wish to share with the community, any lesson that you learned over the past year or two, then definitely leave a comment and let me know about it. And I would love to hear your guys' insight. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys next time.